Hey, it's Pete Cohen here. Welcome to episode 135 of the My365 podcast series. This podcast today is called Street Degree, and it is my goal to help and inspire you to really give you what you need to know in order for you to create the life you want. Now, I don't know whether you have a university degree. I personally have three, and I don't use, I don't think I use any of what I learned there. I had a great time, don't get me wrong, and if you want to have a great life or have a good time, uh, you probably can just maybe doing what you're doing today. But if you have any goals and dreams and ambitions of things that you want to achieve in the future and you want to thrive in this life, I would really encourage you to listen to this podcast because I want to explain to you some of the things that you can start doing today to create an unbelievable life. We know there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be. Let's fill in that gap. Also today, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about my story and what I've achieved and why I'm as passionate as ever to help people just like you create an unbelievable life. So this episode is brought to you by my365elite.me, that's mi365elite.me forward slash 30 days. Go and check that out and see exactly what life coaching can do for you. The number one coaching opportunity in the world for you to create an unbelievable life. So enjoy the podcast and I'll see you on the other side. So welcome to episode 135 of the My365 podcast series, how to get a street degree. Now, I don't know about you, but do you have a degree? I actually have three, uh, which is pretty crazy because I left school with one O-level. I was the last O-levels of 1986, then they became GCSEs. If you're living outside of the UK, you probably haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. I have no A-levels. But I have actually written uh, 18 books. We're actually working on the 19th book. This is a book which I wrote in Japanese. Not that I can speak Japanese, but this is a book on stopping smoking. I'm not even sure which way around. I think they read back to front. Um, This is that book. uh, And I've written books on habit busting, conquering fears, uh, losing weight. In fact, this was the first book I wrote, which was called Slimming with Pete. And I look like a botanist on the front of it there. you wouldn't believe the amount of publishers I approached to try and get them to write this book and they all said no. But look, the point of this podcast is to really explain to you what it is that I feel human beings need to do in order to create the life that they want. So there's a few things that we all have in common. We're all toxic. Now what I mean by that is we breathe toxic air, we drink fluid that has toxins in it, we eat food which has toxins in it. We've all got that in common. Now there are certain things we can do about that, but not everybody does. And the other thing we all have in common is our goals and our dreams and our ambitions. And again, we all have those, but we often don't actually do anything about them. And very few people do create the life that they want. And part of that is because they went to school. And I want to explain to you a little bit more about about me and my story, because I I believe in human beings and I, I know what people like you are actually capable of, but it's whether you want to realize that capability and really take advantage of perhaps getting coached by someone who can help you to rise out of your, maybe your cocoon of self-absorption, your cocoon or your comfort zone of, of who you think you are, rather than who you actually want to become. So I want to explain to you a little bit about my story, because I'm into the story making business. My 365, that's what we do. We make these podcasts, so maybe you can listen to them and you can think, you know what, that's really interesting. Maybe I can apply that. Well, what are you applying it to? You're applying it to the story of your life. There was a program many years ago on ITV. It was called This Is Your Life. And what would happen was it would normally be a celebrity and the celebrity would think that they were going to a function. And then this guy called... Uh, Michael Aspel and there was another guest uh, host before that uh, would come out with a with a red folder like this and say you thought you were doing this tonight but tonight this is your life that was not Michael Aspel it was the other host of the show and then they'd go to a studio and uh, basically 
all these people's friends would come out and they would tell stories and people love to watch that program because they like to see the rich tapestry of who someone is. That's why we watch films, that's why we watch soap operas, because we love a story. Now your story is still has a way to go. Wherever you are in your life right now, your story isn't over, but unless you go to work on doing something probably different to what you're doing today, then your story will probably be quite similar in the future. Maybe you're happy with that, but I don't think so. I reckon inside you, whether you're watching this now on YouTube, whether you're listening to this wherever you are in the world, I reckon there is something inside you that just knows there has to be more to life than this, that there's probably a gap between where you are and where you want to be. And that's why we created My365 Elite, which I want to explain to everyone a little bit more about. You know, My365 uh, podcast is free to everyone, but My365 Elite is really giving you the opportunity to go to work on yourself for ideally 365 days where you learn what you need to learn to create the life you want. And what is that? Well, it's things like willpower. Willpower out predicts IQ. Uh, leadership, learning how to lead yourself, learning how to break habits, learning how to apply mindfulness, learning how to be confident about who you are and what you want to do. Now you can read books and believe you me, I've, I've written a few books on these things. Habit busting, look, I've even got habit busting in Korean. I don't know if any of you can read Korean. Uh, life DIY, but books like this, they don't really make any difference at all because they're words on a page. The real challenge is the application of knowledge. And that's where I believe I can help many, many people do that. And that's what we have been doing. But look, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I left school with nothing. But if I go back, well, I did actually leave with one O level in history, uh, but um, I don't really use that today. And what else did I leave with? Uh, big insecurities, actually. I was so insecure about who I was. I really felt I wasn't good enough. I was comparing myself to people who had achieved things that I was supposed to achieve. You see, when we were born, we are born into a world where for the first few years of our life, we really don't care what people think about us. We are totally absorbed in the moment. We are predominantly happy and if we're not, we'll let the world know about it by screaming and shouting. Then we get a little bit older and we start to become a little bit more insecure because we start to question. That's why we ask the question, why? And even to this day, I don't believe people ask themselves that question enough. Why can't I do what I want to do? What is it that I need to do in order to lose weight, be healthy, to create the financial freedom that I want? Most of us have stopped asking powerful questions of ourselves, but we still question ourselves, whether we're actually good enough, whether we have what it takes. And that happens through programming, growing up. So for many of us, by the time they got to 10 or 11 years old, they became quite insecure. They weren't focusing on themselves, they were looking outside of themselves for solutions, looking for outside of themselves for credibility from the world, as if the, we wanted the world to tell us that we were good enough. Because that's another thing that we all have in common. We all have insecurities. And deep down, most people feel like they're not quite good enough. And we're looking for something outside of ourselves for us to feel good about ourselves. But we know what tends to happen is that's temporary. And if you really, really want to fix yourself and you really want to be the very best that you can be, there is some de-programming. There is some clutter that needs to be cleared out. And there are some new skills and new tools and new techniques that we all need to install. Look, Think of it like this, right now you're watching me through this camera, that camera, and it's going through a computer. Man created this, or sorry, I should say person, because um, it's not just men, it's people create, and we have this ability to create things. And the computer works in a very similar way to how our brain works. But we can get rid of things on our computer and we put them in the trash, but sometimes they're still there and then we have to get rid of them again but that's the same with us. It's whether you wanna let go of what you don't need. 
And let me tell you what I took on, which I didn't need and carried with me for a long, long, long time. From a very young age, I really did feel that I wasn't quite right the way that I was. I wasn't as good as the other people around me. And then when I got to about the age of eight or nine, that idea really manifested. I noticed that one of my testicles was actually getting bigger and I, I didn't really say anything about it. I was quite ashamed and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, many times I uh, made an appointment to go and see the doctor, but I actually canceled it. But it became so uncomfortable and actually so big that there was photographs that you could actually see, wow, this, this huge lump. And I was so self-conscious about it. I was convinced that other people could see it. I wouldn't uh, shower with, uh, when we were playing sport in front of my friends. But the pain became so significant internally that finally I went to the doctor. And uh, the doctor immediately looked and said, listen, this is quite serious, it could be cancer. I called up my mum, and my mum and I were talking about this yesterday, and luckily, uh, I just had the cyst removed. It, was, uh, it wasn't serious, but the scarring had already happened inside. Now, why I tell you this is that I already had this belief. I had this physical manifestation that also, that I wasn't quite right the way that I was, and I carried that through college. And I actually carried that into uh, university. Now, how could someone like me go to university? What I forgot to mention was I was also diagnosed with you know, severe dyslexia, attention deficit disorder. Um, I really, really didn't think I was good enough and I thought I was terrible, I felt massively insecure, which is, I think, how a lot of people feel. But how did I get my way into university? Well, again, out of insecurity because I wanted to prove to the world that I was good enough. Now, what do I mean by that? When you don't feel good about who you are, many people go on a journey to try and get everyone to like them and uh, prove that they're somebody. So that also is very uncomfortable to try and work really hard to get people to like me and for people to think that I was good enough. So I worked really hard. I got into college, then university and uh, wrote books. My drive was to move away from something that was quite painful. Does that make sense to everyone? You know, the idea of moving away from something that wasn't quite right? And that is often most people's drive. Look, it has taken me many years to get to the point to realize what does it actually take in order for people like you and me to transform their lives? Of course, it takes application. Of course, it takes some dedication, and of course it takes looking at things from a fresh pair of eyes. And that's kind of my goal, to help you look at things differently so you go, you know what, I've never thought of it like that. Maybe you are that sort of person that has been driven to move away from where you were in the past. But the biggest challenge for us when we do that is when we get comfortable. We get comfortable and many of us just stop and give up. But for me, that's never happened. I've still uh, continued to be driven to move forwards uh, because you get that temporary high of doing something which maybe made a difference to other people. In my 20s, I massively burnt out. Uh, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, I was diagnosed with ME, and literally for 10 years of my life, I might look okay, but inside I was dying. Inside there were days I would wake up and think, I have no idea how I'm gonna get through. Uh, this day, but I found something in myself which I didn't even know that was there uh, and that's when I actually met my coach who I worked with for 16 years who painted one of the pictures that's over there uh, who's no longer alive uh, today, but uh, his advice uh, helped me make a couple of million pounds, believe it or not, when I sold a, a weight loss program. Uh, his advice saved my wife's life. My wife wasn't given very long to live and I called him and asked him what I should do and he said, find people that are still alive, find out why. He said, what is she gonna do when she gets better? And I said, you know, um, well, I don't understand why you're saying that because she's only been given 18 months to live. And then I said, uh, well, sorry, he said, people defy the odds. He said, you defied the odds in being born. Once upon a time, there were millions of fish, a uh, little sperm, you know, and you were the one that made it through, you defied the odds. This is where I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm saying because I believe in you, whoever you are, wherever you are in the world, and if there's anything that you want to achieve, I believe in you. 
because you have something in you that I have in me. It's something that can be activated to do great things. But for most of us, that's only ever activated through trauma, through something really difficult that happens. That's when we often get to see the best of human beings. Now let me ask you this, has the world seen the best of you yet? And do you believe that your future is unwritten? And do you believe that the best is yet to come? Let me say that again. Do you believe that your future is unwritten? And do you believe the best is yet to come? Because if you do, I believe you can do something about that. But the challenge you're going to have to face is yourself. The obstacles that you face yourself, which is in your own head, which is the voice that will pull you back. The fight that we all have in life, you, me, everybody, the voice in the head, we call it the duck, the duck that quacks away, that will always try and keep you where you are, stop you from moving forwards. But I've said on pre as I've said on previous podcasts, the Romans believed we were all born with a genius inside us. I never thought of myself as a genius. I thought of myself as the lowest of the low, and all I had to do was try and prove to the world that I was good enough, but even when I did feel good enough, it would never last until I changed my perception and woke up to the fact that I am a genius because I have a genius inside me that is driven to move forwards. That's what the Romans believed. They believed well, you're all born with a genius. It's a voice in your head that would guide you in the direction where you could give your greatest gifts uh, and, and your greatest abilities to the world. And this might be quite a lot to take in, whatever time of day you're listening to this, but the fact of the matter is, you have what it takes to do great things. And there probably is a gap between where you are and where you wanna be. Now, how could you fill that gap? Definitely decide on a future destination. And I'm not talking about the end of your life, which isn't necessarily a bad place to think about, the end of your life and what you want the legacy of your life to be. The greatest sports team of all time, the New Zealand rugby team, an 82% win ratio. When you play for New Zealand, the whole goal is that when you finish playing for New Zealand, you left the New Zealand rugby team in a better shape than when you joined it. And imagine if that was the goal of your life as well. Again, these are big and they are important messages. You might feel fired up right now, but it's what you do next. And that's where I would really, really encourage you to look at what my 365 Elite can do for you. I believe that my 365 Elite is without doubt the number one, the number one coaching opportunity in the world for you to have world-class coaching. That's what I am. I'm a world-class coach. Why? Well, I work all over the world and have had world-class results with everyone from Olympic athletes to everyday people just like you and me to business executives and uh, I, I know what it takes and that's why we've put Elite together, daily live broadcasts that are available to you wherever you are in the world um, and uh, an access to a group of people, a community of people. I think when you start to work with like-minded people, wow, anything is possible and if you look at what any one person has achieved in their life, I bet they didn't do it on their own. I bet they had some help from some like-minded people. And this is what Elite also is, and this is something that we can send to you. You can become a part of Elite, uh, literally, uh, for a pound, one pound. And we will send you this uh, for the first month. And you'll have this, and this is really designed to help you go through uh, the street degree, the things that you need to live and survive on the street, which are, when I talk about the street, I mean life. And these are the key areas that we focus on to help you master and apply wellness, creativity, up your creative genius is, is the masterclass, mindfulness, leadership, confidence, willpower, movement, habits, upgrading your life and how to have an incredible year. This is all designed in such a way to uh, help you just become the person that you want to come, go to work on yourself and once you get into the learning mindset, the growth mindset, it actually becomes quite infectious. So it's been my absolute pleasure to be able to share with you some of my own story, some of my own journey. And I'm 47 years old and recently I was with a group of friends who I was at university with. And I don't know whether you've met up with people before who you used to hang out with and 
a lot of the conversation as, do you remember? And we had some great times, but as we were talking, it really hit me that I'm 47 and I'm probably halfway through my life. What about the next 47 years? And that's all I wanted to talk about. I say, okay guys, what are we gonna do next? Because I believe the best is yet to come. And if you believe the best is yet to come, I would encourage you to look at the value that coaching can play in your life. Check out My365 Elite. We'll put a link uh, here for you to go and see for yourself exactly what coaching can do for you. Uh, we've only just got started with what we're doing with our podcast. We're going to continue to put out great content uh, for you with people who have got stories to tell from our members of the month to some famous people who have done heroic things uh, and share wisdom and knowledge with you that you can apply. We appreciate you wherever you are in the world. If you've enjoyed uh, this uh, podcast, please uh, share it, make a comment and together let's make the world a better place. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time for the next My 365 podcast. <music>